Welcome to the live streaming of the Holy Mass from the Redemptus Media Center. Let us pray for the following intentions during this sacred celebration. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory. to you, O Lord. A great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young ass and sat upon it, as it as is written, Fear not, daughter Zion, behold your king is coming, sitting on an ass called. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that this had been written of him and had been done to him. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backwards. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Your response. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let him save him. Let him release him, for in him he delights. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs have surrounded me. 
A band of the wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly raise for the Gospel. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark it was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was this ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, Wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, 
Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready, there prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to one another, one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is, di who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. As they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives, Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he emphatically said, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this chalice from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. And he came, and, he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, 
Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him. And he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. And many bore false witness against him. But their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet, even about this, their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. And the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have, heard him you have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly, you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. And he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests 
held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And a crowd came up and began to ask Pilate as to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests turned up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? And they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him up to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed them in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. It was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, The king of the Jews, and with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. And also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. And when the centurion stood facing him, 
saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph brought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen, in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, In the readings, right at the beginning, we see the villains of the peace. The reading of the Passion of our Lord, we meet diverse types of people who look at Jesus with different eyes. First, there are the Jewish authorities. They want to destroy Jesus, but want to do it very stealthily because they want to avoid the arrest on the feast because of the crowds. Yet when they do arrest him, they come up with false testimony. The testimony of the witnesses does not agree. In desperation, the high priest provokes Jesus to commit himself but does not succeed. Ultimately, it is Jesus himself in his own testimony about himself as Messiah and his future role as victorious judge, that being considered blasphemous, leads to his condemnation. However, Pilate, a non-Jew, a Roman, remains unconvinced of the charge, for he knows that Jesus is being delivered up on account of envy. He could ask the people, how could he ask the people for the release of a man wanted for insurrection and murder? Dear friends, we see that Pilate actually does not pursue the matter long enough, even though the Romans are known by repute to be just in their judgment. He offers some resistance, but the demand of the crowds, who, who he knows are, have been instigated by the Jewish authorities, asks for Jesus to be crucified. Pilate gives him gradually, possibly to keep intact his own reputation of having avoided a riot. There are other open responses to Jesus. The first, we must try to grasp how the common people react to Jesus. There are people on both sides of the divide, those who want Jesus dead, those who want him alive. Even today, when an important question is to be settled, dear friends, people offer their mandate in unexpected ways. 
There are those who are genuine in their response. There are others who compromise by choosing what is expedient or self-serving. We have the authentic response of a woman who breaks an alabaster jar of pure nard and anoints the head of Jesus. Jesus interprets that action of the woman as a beautiful thing. She has recognized not only the kingship of Jesus, but before him anointed him for his burial. There is then the statement of those who do not recognize Jesus for who he is, who rather seek the money value of the ointment and what it could do for the poor than for what it actually did for Jesus. It is a fact, my dear friends, that those who evaluate life only in terms of economics do not hesitate to betray even a good man or a woman if they can profit by it. Judas is presented as one such man, one of the twelve. He pretends to be with the disciples by dipping bread in the same dish with Jesus, yet he has made up his mind to betray him. And finally, he will do it with a filial kiss. How terrible, dear friends, when brother or sister betrays brother or sister to death. Why? Just to gain financially from it. There are others, notably disciples, who know which side they stand, but they are too afraid to declare it openly. They make great promises, like Peter did. If I must die with you, I will not deny you. But in the face of opposition, they fall back on denial or violence. One of the disciples drew a sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. St. Mark presents the disciples, in fact, as slow in understanding the final destiny of Jesus. No doubt that even when Jesus agonizes in the garden, where are they? They are asleep. And when the crunch comes, they forsake him and they flee. Of course, Peter will later break down and weep as the truth of Jesus' words, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times, strikes home. Then there is the, the indifferent responses, an element in the crowd that is indifferent. These are those who do not think or care. They let themselves be pressured because they have not taken the trouble to evaluate the situation for themselves. How many of those, my dear friends, who shout, crucify him, crucify him, really believed that Jesus deserved to die? If you really went to the, uh, each of the crowd and asked, do you really think he should be crucified? No. They have been pressured to say that these are the same people whom the Jewish authorities at some other time called rabble. They are cursed because they do not know the law. But now they are being made use of by these Jewish chief priests, manipulated to shout for Jesus' crucifixion. Today on Palm Sunday, about a week earlier, the same crowd is waving palm branches, singing hosannas. Today we sing hosanna. We could ask the pertinent question today, how many of those who join in the atrocities against Christians can really vouch that the Christians have offended them? How fickle can some be? How indifferent? It is like offering Jesus wine mingled with myrrh. In a way, it is 
saying, we know you don't deserve to die, and therefore we want to make your death as easy as possible, because the myrrh that is added in the wine will numb your senses. But Jesus does not accept that wine. Indifference, my dear friends, sir, strives to strip away the God-given human dignity. We all need the grace to pierce the mystery of God. The mystery that is unfolding for us in this holy week. The cross is not a human idea. Though it comes from the Romans, the cross was God's idea. People are more comfortable with convenient solutions that reveal power. Save yourself and come down from the cross that we may see and believe. But Jesus remains resolute and reads his last. The curtain of the temple tears in two from top to down, bottom, revealing that from now on, God can no longer be held captive in the inner sanctuary, but is accessible to all. It is the Gentile centurion, and not any of his disciples who recognizes that on the cross is the Son of God. He recognizes him for who he is. It is he, therefore, who shows the world that God chose to save the world, not through something convenient, but through the death of his own Son. The first reading, which forms the third servant song of Isaiah, the visionary, beckons one to listen to the master like a disciple. For only then can one have the right to speak like one. However, dear friends, to speak like a disciple will involve trial, but once the Lord has opened his ear, he will not remain silent. The second reading tells us how Jesus prepared himself for a disciple's mission by embracing our humanity. This did not diminish God's glory. In a strange way, the death of Jesus, in fact, paved the way for God to be glorified. This was something that the Gentile centurion was able to fathom as he beheld Jesus on the cross. The question before us today, my dear brothers and sisters, is how we look at Jesus on the cross. We have seen the different responses, favorable and unfavorable, from Jesus' own lifetime. May God give us the grace to see where we stand today so that we may make the right response for ourselves Amen. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, and Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, died, and, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today, dear friends, we celebrate Christ's solemn entry into the city of Jerusalem to fulfill his paschal sacrifice. As we follow him to Mount Calvary, may our sins be washed away, and may we rise with him to the glory of a new life. Let us place all our prayers before our Heavenly Father and say, your response will be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, Lord, in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all Christians called to hope in the power of Jesus' cross and witness to his resurrection, for the clergy who will lead us in prayer during this holy week, give us a true experience of the Paschal mystery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of governments, that they may govern and lead the people entrusted to their care, upholding the values of truth, justice, and human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all healthcare providers and first responders in situations of pandemic and other calamities, that they may enjoy good health, peace of mind, and generosity of heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those suffering because of illness and diseases, that they may experience fullness of health and complete recovery by the healing touch of our Christ, our Saviour. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy hear our prayer. For the physical and spiritual welfare of all our parishioners, that this Holy Week celebrations will bring us abundance of blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us now remember our own petitions the intentions of our families, of our neighborhood, people who have requested our prayers on various occasions. God our Father, we enter the Most Holy Week to participate in the sufferings, death, and resurrection of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask you to bless us and the whole world with the gift of a spiritual renewal we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our, by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death 
has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall, shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. 
nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we now enter into the Holy Week. Please note the timings for the our services from Redemptus Media Center. On Monday, Thursday, at 5 p.m., we have the Mass of the Lord's Supper, followed by Eucharistic Adoration. On Good Friday, at 6.30 a.m., we have the Way of the Cross, and at 3 p.m., we have the Passion Service. And on Easter Vigil, that's 30th Saturday night for the Easter Vigil, it's going to be at 9 p.m. And on Easter Day, as usual, the Sunday, we have the celebration at 9.15 a.m. So do share with those who may need this information. And may this time of the Holy Week be a time of renewal and coming close to God. I have another important announce announcement to make. We are going to start a new program from Redemptress Media Center called Blessed Bonds. It is RMC's Family Faith Game Show. We had a very successful run through our Faith Champs, which was our inter-school quest competition. I guess summer is a time when families can come together and have a good game with fun and faith. And therefore, we want to invite families to come forward to register for this game show. We're going to be shooting this on two days. That's on the 11th and 12th of uh, April uh, here in Bangalore. So maximum number of people to participate would be three plus one which means you can four of you uh, need to be there and all of you have to be uh, directly related not uncle and aunts but only uh, family members can uh, uh, represent and come together to play this game um, you don't have to be super spiritual or super knowledgeable about the bible it'll be for sure questions uh, and games conducted based on scripture and catholic faith so everyone is invited to come and learn a little bit and have a little fun and so that we can all join together for this program so it's an invitation also for those of you who are from out of town i know uh, many of you are not in bangalore so uh, if you really want to kind of travel here to bangalore uh, we can assure you uh, stay and uh, lodge and uh, food for the days of the shoot uh, if you are able to get here to Bangalore. So anyone can uh, register and um, uh, for, for this game show. We will also invite uh, religious nuns and brothers also from the same community if you want to register. So uh, please note this uh, new program that we want to uh, produce from Redemptors Media Center. Blessed bonds, um, and uh, you can uh, WhatsApp to our email uh, or to our WhatsApp number or email, uh, and uh, join us uh, for this program. And dear friends, uh, as we begin the Holy Week, um, it's a time when we spend more time in prayer, and uh, uh, and it's a time when we truly participate in the journey of Jesus as He enters um, into Jerusalem uh, for His Passion and Death. So let it be a time of reflection. And let it be a time of renewal for all of us. And from Redemptus Media Center, we wish you a very happy and a blessed um, Holy Week. And uh, we will see you again during the program for the final blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hes hes hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
welcomes the nation, rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Comes the nation rejoices. Oh.